Hello, everybody, and welcome back to week number eight of the college football season and my predictions back with the usual format this week. Last week, I did a live stream. I didn't have much time to put together a video like I typically do, so I just did a live stream Saturday morning. I only picked four games because there really wasn't anything on the schedule. We got six games coming up this week, but of course, as always, let's take a look back at the games I predicted last week. I went 4-0 in the four games I predicted, 3-1 and against the spread. I got my upset right, got the lock wrong, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The first game was number 24, Texas Tech, on the road against West Virginia, and Texas Tech was a three and a half point favorite. I went with West Virginia just because Texas Tech you know, their one loss coming into this game wasn't a good loss, and all of their wins were against weaker opponents, and they didn't really look very impressive in those wins. And West Virginia has had some good games where they look like a really good team, so I went with them to win this game at home. They were actually down 35-17 to halfway through the third quarter, so it wasn't looking good, but they get a touchdown with five minutes left in the third to make it 35-24. to And then they get a touchdown early in the fourth to pull within three. Then they get another touchdown next time they touch the ball to take the 39-35 lead. Texas Tech really couldn't do anything after their first two possessions of the third quarter. And West Virginia ends up adding on a touchdown with 3.23 to go to make it a 46-35 game. And that was the final. Texas Tech had 513 yards of offense. Two West Virginia's 396. Each team turned it over once. West Virginia had 28 first downs to Texas Tech's 27. So pretty even matchup, but West Virginia just came out in the second half and just all things started to click for, click for them. Will Greer goes 32 for 41, 352 yards, five touchdowns and one interception. So he had a great game. West Virginia only had 44 yards rushing to Texas Tech's 190. And they still end up winning by 11 points. So we got that game right, which brought us to the next game. It was number 12, Oklahoma, on the road, facing Texas in the Red River rivalry. Oklahoma was a 9.5 point favorite. I said Oklahoma would, would win, but I said that they would not cover that spread, which they don't. They win by 5, 29-24. That spread, I mean, I thought that was easy. That could have been my lock of the week. On the road, against your biggest opponent, coming off of really ugly loss against a terrible team and I think Texas is trending up I thought it was an easy pick to take Texas to cover the nine and a half I said Oklahoma would win which they do but Texas came to play as I knew they would and they actually had a couple opportunities to win the game but they just couldn't hang on they took the lead with eight minutes to go and then immediately gave up a touchdown three plays later and just weren't able to get it back so a good game by Texas overall um They lose by five, so we got the pick right on that and the spread right, which brings us to our lock of the week. It was a little bit of a uh, out there one. I went with Air Force as an eight-point favorite to win and cover the spread against UNLV. Air Force was at home. UNLV not had a great year. I figured if Air Force won, it would be at least by 10. They did win, so we got that right, but they only win by four, so we did not get the lock of the week right. But it could have been worse because they were actually trailing 30-7 to early in the third quarter. I don't know what it is about these big comebacks that happened. But uh, Air Force gets a touchdown with 8 minutes left in the third to make it 30-14. to They get another one near the end of the third to make it 30-20. to Then they get another touchdown in the beginning of the fourth quarter to make it 30-27. to And then with 2 minutes left, they go 10 plays, 80 yards, and 3 minutes and 40 seconds to take the lead. 34 to 30 and after that UNLV was not able to do much they got it back near midfield before turning it over on downs and Air Force gets the win so got the pick right spread wrong then the last game from last week was my upset of the week it was LSU at home I had them beating number 10 Auburn as a nine and or what was it It was a seven and a half point underdog now by the time I recorded that video Clemson lost to Syracuse on the road and what was the other one what was the other one why can't i think of this hold on one second let me take a look okay yeah by the time i recorded that video it was saturday morning so clemson had already lost on the road to syracuse number two losing to an unranked team washington state had already lost on the road to california number eight losing to an unranked team 
I said, that's right. Unranked LSU is going to win at home over a top 10 team. That's going to be three top 10 teams going down to unranked teams this week. It ended up being four as Washington also lost that night on the road against Arizona State. So we had four top 10 teams lose to unranked teams all on the road. So I went with LSU just because we've seen them in a couple of games where you're like, oh, they're pretty good, and but eh, maybe not. Auburn, they've been all right, but they haven't been super dominant. And on the road, LSU, you know, SEC, I've said it every week, it's not good this year really at all outside of Bama and Georgia. So I thought these teams are pretty even, so I just went with the home team. I threw out the, 10 and the number 10 versus unranked thing that didn't mean anything to me. Um, I picked LSU to beat Auburn as my upset of the week, and they do. They win 27-23, to 23, and again, another second-half comeback. At the end of the half, it was 23-14 to 14 Auburn, and that was because LSU scored a touchdown with 32 seconds left in the half. Before that, it was 27 to, or 23-7. to 7. Nothing happened in the third quarter, but then in the fourth, LSU gets a punt return early in the quarter to go down 23-21. to 21. Then they end up adding a field goal with two minutes left in the game, a whole lot of nothing in between. That gives them a 24-23 to 23 lead. Then for some reason, with 38 seconds left, they kick another field goal instead of just punting the ball back with less than 40 seconds to go and saying, okay, you come down the field and kick. They try a field goal, decently long one too, 36 yards. That just extends their lead to four, uh, which they end up hanging on to I don't know about that decision though when you're down at your opponent's 19 for third and four or fourth and four and they're out of timeouts and you have a one point lead I I would just run the ball and you know maybe you get four yards and the game's over but if you don't you know worst case scenario maybe they just stuff you at the line okay at least what five seconds is are, is off the clock so now they're gonna have to go With no timeouts in 33 seconds, they're going to have to get into field goal range to win the game. But when you kick the field goal, if you miss it, A, now they have an extra couple yards to work with, most likely, unless you get stuffed on a run play. And B, it also gives the potential of a block, which can easily be your return for a touchdown if a block happens. So I don't know. At the end of the day, LSU wins, so I get to pick right, which was my upset of the week. So after seven weeks, we are 41 and 19 overall and straight up who will win. We are 30 and 32 against the spread, two and four for upsets and four and three for lock of the week. It should be three and three for upsets, by the way. Florida State losing to Miami two weeks ago should not have happened. Okay, so that brings us into this week. Like I said, we got six games for this week. The first is my lock of the week. That's right, it's number 10 Oklahoma State on the road against Texas. Texas coming off of a tough loss at home against Oklahoma. Oklahoma State coming off of a big win at home against Baylor, who is bad. Oklahoma State is a 7-point favorite, so obviously I'm taking them to cover the spread, right? That's my lock of the week. Oklahoma State's going to run into Texas and just pound them. No, quite the opposite. For the first time this year, my lock of the week is an underdog that I'm having cover the spread. I think Oklahoma State's going to win. But I like Texas to lose by less than a touchdown in this game. I think it will be close, and it won't surprise me if Texas wins. Can you imagine another top 10 team losing on the road against an unranked team? I can. But I think Texas will lose, but I like them to cover the seven-point spread. I think they're going to come out strong after that close loss to Oklahoma. You know, you got to keep in mind, since that Maryland game, Texas is been pretty good their only two losses one was in double overtime on the road against USC who was number four at the time and then they just lost last week by less than a touchdown to number 12 Oklahoma since that Maryland game they've beat San Jose State 56 to nothing which is what you would expect any Texas team to do they beat Iowa State on the road by 10 which isn't impressive but Oklahoma State lost or but Oklahoma lost to them on the road so And then two weeks ago, they went double overtime at home and pulled one out against Kansas State. Kansas State's all right. Oklahoma State, obviously a very good team. Their only loss, though, was at home by 13 points against TCU, who's also very good, but that's not a good loss. I don't care who you're playing. 
if you're a top 10 team, you should not be losing to anybody by two scores at home. So give me Texas to cover this seven point spread. That's my lock of the week. It's going to happen. Oklahoma State more than likely still wins. So that's who I'm going with. And then we have the upset of the week coming up. It is number 20 UCF Central Florida as a seven point favorite going up against Navy on the road. Navy was 5-0 and before last week when they lost by three points on the road against Memphis. UCF is 5-0, and but really haven't played anybody. They played Florida International, Maryland, Memphis, Cincinnati, ECU. Now, in fairness to UCF, they've blown out all those teams. They beat all those teams soundly. And Maryland's a good win. And they beat Memphis, who beat Navy, but that doesn't mean anything. I don't buy into transitive property at all. But Navy, pretty good team too. And they're at home, that triple option. I just give. I just have a feeling. I don't really have any numbers or stats in front of me that goes, oh yeah, I like Navy in this one. I just have a feeling that Navy's going to win this one at home as a seven-point underdog. So that's my upset of the week. Navy over UCF. I think I might have said earlier in the video I have six games this week. It's actually five. I don't know if I said that at all, but if I did, that's why I'm throwing this in here. All right, and then the next game is number 19, Michigan, going on the road. Night game, whiteout, number two, Penn State. Penn State's a nine and a half point favorite. This game is very interesting. Michigan's offense is legitimately not good. Their defense is legitimately top three in the country. On the road, whiteout, night game. I like Penn State to win, but nine and a half point favorite? Really? That's a little high. That's a that's really high for me. Let me ask you a question. Guess how many teams in the top twenty five right now does not have a win against a team with a winning record? There's one. Do you know who that one team in the top 25 is without a win against a team with a winning record? It's Penn State. You know, we're supposed to just accept that Penn State's a great team. They haven't played anybody. They legitimately have not played anybody. Akron? Pittsburgh? Georgia State? Iowa? Who they almost lost to. Indiana? Northwestern, who they struggled with for the vast majority of the game, and Saquon Barkley didn't do anything until it was over. So that's why I don't buy Penn State as a nine and a half point favorite. They're going up against. It's not even funny how much this is the best defense they've played. Best defense they played so far was Iowa. This Michigan defense is not even exaggerating three times better than that. So yeah, quite frankly, I don't know how Michigan's going to score very much. But I don't know how Penn State's going to score very much either. And with Michigan's defense, I don't care how bad the offense is, as long as they aren't completely shitting all over themselves like they did in the Michigan State game. They're going to be in any game they play, whether it's at Penn State, at Wisconsin, home against Ohio State, wherever they play in a bowl game. The defense is good enough to give them a chance to win every single game, including this one. That's why I don't buy this 9.5 point spread. Now, like I said, If the offense shits all over itself like they did against Michigan State with five turnovers, Michigan turns the ball over five times this Saturday, they'll lose by 30. But that's probably not going to happen. Even when they did turn the ball over five times to none against Michigan State, they lost by four with like seven chances in a row to win the game or take the lead. That's how good this defense is. Oh, and one of Michigan State's touchdowns came on a drive that started inside Michigan's territory due to a turnover. So really, they only gave up one touchdown all game legitimately the defense. So Michigan's defense is just too good to take anybody beating them by nine and a half points. That's ridiculous. I don't care how awful the offense is. This game might be three to nothing Penn State for all I care. All I know is that Michigan's defense is too good to lose nine to five or by nine and a half points or more. So give me Michigan to cover. Got to go with Penn State to win though. But it wouldn't surprise me if they don't. That's right. Even a nine and a half point favorite. It wouldn't surprise me if Michigan wins. This is the first game at least in the last six years, that Penn State has had any pressure on them. At home, 
top 25 matchup. You're number two in the country for, I don't even know the last time Penn State was number two. It had to have been almost 10 years ago. So here you go. Here's all the pressure on Penn State. Not a lot of pressure on Michigan. They're a two-score underdog. Can Penn State handle it? James Franklin is 0-2 against Harbaugh. Penn State hasn't beat Michigan since 2013. It was triple overtime as well. So Michigan's defense, they're just too good. They're too good to pick anybody to beat them by two scores. So once again, Michigan to cover, but I will go with Penn State to win. It brings us to the next game is number 11, USC, on the road against number 13, Notre Dame. This is the second, aside the uh, Michigan-Penn State game, of the top 25 matchups this week. Big rivalry game, of course. Notre Dame at home. Notre Dame is a three and a half point favorite. Give me USC. That's right. I'm going with USC on the road to beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame is another case of who have they played, really? Not really anybody. The one good team they've played is Georgia. I don't buy that Michigan State's good team. I'm sorry. They barely beat Minnesota. They barely beat a Michigan team with a five to nothing turnover ratio. But I digress. Notre Dame hasn't really played anybody except Georgia, who they lost to at home. They're going to lose this game as well at home against USC, who came out of a dogfight against Utah. I don't think USC is as great as they were originally projected, but I still don't buy into Notre Dame. Maybe they proved me wrong with a win here, but until proven otherwise, I'm taking USC to go into Notre Dame and come away with a victory. Last game of the week. A lot of down weeks these last few weeks in terms of quality games. So I just threw one in here that kind of interested me. Not a great game or one that most people are looking forward to. But Colorado versus Washington State. Washington Washington State number 15. Coming off of a game where they got absolutely destroyed on the road against California. 37-3. Two weeks ago, I had them losing to Oregon on the road. And they beat them 33-10. So I figured, hey, maybe Washington State's turned the corner. They actually won one of these games where they typically disappoint. But then they go into Cal and just get dominated. Not a good look for Washington State. Colorado's 4-3 and three this year. They're coming off of a close win on the road against Oregon State, who I didn't think would win another game this year. Still don't. Oregon State sucks so bad, so beating them by three points is not a good sign, especially when you lost three straight games before that. So on the road against Washington State, Washington State has to be pissed off about how they played last week. They're coming in to destroy Colorado. So give me Washington State to win and cover the 10.5 point spread this weekend. So that'll do it for this week. Thank you everybody for watching. As always, tune in next week, break down these games I just predicted and predict some more. And as always, feel free to comment below with your thoughts on my predictions for this week or any predictions that you have for any of these games or any other around the country. Thank you so much and I will see you all next week. Goodbye.